let's have a little look at uh, the the, uh, the Revolution card and AW Revolution taking place on Saturday the 29th of February 2020 and uh, according to my list here I've got eight matches that have been announced one uh, has been named uh, a, a, a kickoff match I think that uh, um, SCU versus the Dark Order um, could well be a kickoff match uh, during the hour pre-show that they've got uh, tomorrow night. Um, but uh, let's have a look at uh, the other seven matches and started with Pack versus Orange Cassidy then. So this is an interesting match. I know they had a, a brief exchange a couple of weeks ago where Pack wasn't too impressed with uh, Orange Cassidy's shin kicks. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, they, they, you know, they, they said in the ring this week on Dynamite that, um, uh, he, what, how did they describe it? The best friend said that he, he, he might try or something like that. He might put in some effort. He might try in this match. But I, I've seen Orange Cassidy wrestle. He, he's kind of performed this character for a while now. But then when, when the match gets kind of really into it, um, he does perform some awesome moves, not just to dive through the ropes, um, but he, he is a, an out and out awesome wrestler. So I think that when the, you know when when the match gets going between him and Pack, you will see Orange Cassidy kind of surprise a few people with what he's capable of in the ring. We know what Pack's capable of. We saw it during the 30 minute Ironman match uh, on Wednesday for crying out loud. He's just uh, one of the one of the best in the world. Uh, but uh, I, I'm intrigued by this match because of the contrast in styles, because of the contrast in characteristics. You've obviously got the, you know, the the angry, nasty bastard pack, and then you've got the kind of, you know, uh, half-assed Orange Cassidy, sure. um, and uh, you know, it's going to be such a, a really fun, amazing match. But um, uh, I've, I've got to say, I've, I've got to, I can only see a pack win here. To be honest with you, I can only see a pack win. Um, but this is Orange Cassidy's first singles match in AEW, so it'll be interesting to see if they put the win on him. Um, I don't think a loss will hurt him, to be honest with you. I seriously don't think a loss will hurt Orange Cassidy because I think he's so over with the fans. Uh, whether he wins or loses, he's still going to be massively popular uh, when all said and done. But so give us your thoughts on this one and give us a winner as well. Yeah, well, straight off, Pac will win it, uh, but Cassidy will look strong in defeat. It's going to be one of those, as you sort of said, you know, is that over... Um, the, the loss were harming. Um, if anything, it'll, it'll you know make people pop more because I just think if this is the first match on the actual show, um, they're going to have the mentality of going out there and setting the bar for the rest of them to follow. And yeah, I sort of said uh, on the on the Facebook page, I think this has got the potential to be the gem of the night. I think this mm. match could be the one that people are talking about the next day, uh, just purely because. If you don't know much about Cassidy, obviously you just know him as this nonchalant character of hands in pockets, just like me. Yeah. Uh, and then, but yeah, once he gets fired up in this match, I think yeah, him and Pack will just go at it in spades, and yeah, it, 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 will, it will deliver. Yeah, I'm really excited for this match. I can't tell you how excited I am for for these two. Um, I think the fans are going to be on their feet throughout all of it. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. Um, then the next match uh, for the AEW Women's World Championships, a brand new world champion, Nyla Rose, going on up against Chris Statlander. I think, to be honest with you, this, this was the match that everybody wanted for Revolution. Um, as I've said uh, over the last couple of weeks on uh, Wrestling with John's podcast, I'm so happy that Nyla Rose is the new women's champion. I think she adds a breath of fresh air to the division. Um, as much as I admired Ryu's um, ability in the ring, um, I, I found the division kind of felt a bit flat with her as the champion. With Nyla Rose as the champion, I think that she's um, you know already doing a good job, um, both uh, from a character standpoint. I think she's uh, good uh, in the ring as a kind of a, a big woman wrestler. Um, but uh, I think that her character, more than anything, just just kind of does it for me. And uh, going up against Chris Statlander, uh, you know, she, she, she had a, a false start or two in 2019 uh, when she first appeared on AEW. But um, I think she makes a perfect number one contender. And I think these two kind of um, bigger uh, but quite athletic, powerful uh, women wrestlers will, will definitely deliver on Saturday night. Um, I've got to be honest, I can't see Nyla Rose losing the championship so soon after winning it. Um, but nevertheless, I think Chris Statland is going to give her a run for her money. But uh, I'm going for Nyla Rose. What about yourself? Yeah, Nyla Rose, she's not going to drop it this soon. And I just want to say she's, she's a good uh, figurehead for the division. Uh, she'll be there week in, week out. Uh, and it's definitely, you know, she's definitely someone they can build the division around. 
and hopefully start implementing, implementing some storylines going forward. So, you know, the, the, the journey to the challenge her, you know, means something. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to, to that one in particular. Like I say, it seems quite a fresh, quite a new and interesting match. Chris Statlander is, is a hell of a wrestler. And um, yeah, Nyla Rose, we just uh, love everything about her. I think she's a, a good big woman wrestler and uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, reminds me of when I first started watching women's wrestling back in the 90s with the likes of Aja Kong and Borna Kano and, uh, you know, but, but yeah, she, she's a beast. And uh, yeah, I think she's um, a, an awesome uh, world champion as it stands at the moment. Um, then, then we've got Darby Allen going up against Sammy Guevara. So I think this is a match that a lot of people are looking forward to. Two uh, very similar wrestlers in terms of their um, a, a ability in the ring. Uh, both kind of quite um, high flying uh, risk takers, daredevils, you could say, uh, with, with Darby Allen definitely being the, the kind of more, uh, more more crazy of the two wrestlers. Sammy Guevara is a bit more um, into the, the flips and the dives, but he's a bit he's quite an accurate wrestler in terms of the way he hits his moves. He's quite smooth in the ring um, and uh, a good all round performer. And uh, despite the fact that he was on the receiving end of that super kick from uh, Matt Jackson last week, he sold it like an absolute boss. Um, so uh, ca- I can't wait to see what these two do. Um, it's going to be absolutely crazy. I think Sammy Guevara, more than anything, is really delivering as a heel as well. I think he, you know being part of the inner circle has, has done him as a character and as a, you know as an overall performer um, massive favours. And certainly being around Chris Jericho and what he's learned from him. I think he, he's, he's definitely really elevated his game, elevated his career, being part of the inner circle. I, I just, this is another match similar to the other two that we just spoke about that I just can't wait to see. I'm just really intrigued. It seems fresh, exciting, too young, uh, really you know good up and coming wrestlers that we know can perform in the ring. It's, it's, it's a tough one to call, though, to be honest with you. I think the crowd favourite is obviously going to be Darby Allen. Um, I, 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 I like Sammy Guevara more. So, uh, you know, for that logic alone, I'm going to go for Sammy Guevara. Uh, but uh, what about yourself, Nick? Uh, I think this is coming back off of an injury. Uh, Alan will get the EW. Uh, and I think the just kind of got the feeling about Sammy is that it will take a loss, but still look good with, look good losing, uh, which they need to be careful of going forward because it's going to start getting into dodgy territory where he's just going to be losing all the time. They've got to sort of, you know, they're that confident and he is that good. Uh, yeah, they, they could risk damaging the character if he takes too many more losses, but I think he is going to take a loss to Alan. Mm, yeah, and uh, I, I think, you know, if, if Sammy Guevara is going to win, it will be a, a cheap victory. It will be kind of like a, you know, a, a, a roll up with feet on the ropes or, or yeah. something like that, or maybe a bit of outside interference from um, from Santana and Ortiz, who I don't think uh, are actually involved in a match. So they could potentially, you know, accompany Sammy Guevara down to the ring, which could play a factor. In fact, I'll, now that I've said that, I'm always certain that that's um, a, a yes. likelihood that they will accompany him down to the ring, which could lead to, you know, if, if Sammy Guevara is going to win, it's going to be through uh, through um, uh-huh. some some nefarious outside interference. But uh, yeah, that, that was going to be one to watch definitely uh another one to watch is going to be jake hager versus dusty Rhodes. um we've not seen jake hager in a, in a match at all i don't think whether it be tag or uh, in singles since he's uh, been on aw he's been the kind of very silent uh slightly comical uh but very menacing kind of uh, henchman of the inner circle uh, but uh, he's played his part very, very well. So we get to see kind of what he can do inside the ring. We we know that he's a former um, WWF, WWE uh, World Heavyweight Champion, of course, many, many moons ago. And uh, of course, he's uh, got a 2-0 uh, record in uh, mixed martial arts. Um, but um, yeah, this could be quite an interesting match between two veterans of the, the wrestling game, you could say. Um, but I, I, I'm expecting a win from uh, Jake Hager here, to be honest with you. I think Dustin Rhodes, is, as good as a fight he's going to put up on, uh, put on on Saturday night, I think uh, Jake Hager is the one that he's going to be kind of uh, putting over on this occasion. I think Dustin Reynolds, his, his uh, role within the company is to kind of put the, you know, the other person over. Um, but um, I'm going for Jake Hager. Um, I, I, I think purely because we haven't seen anything from him. It, you know, he's, he's a... Uh, similar to um, Orange Cassidy, I suppose, his first singles match in AEW. But uh, Hager is the man for me. But what about yourself? 
yeah, uh, he's got a win to keep that sort of. If he loses, his whole character is useless. Yes. Uh, if he loses, he's, he's, he's not the enforcer anymore. He's, he's, he's useless to the other circle. So he's got to, he's got to get the W. And like I say, I think Dustin will just make him look like a million dollars, uh, you know, and put him over. He'll bust his ass to make Hager look good. Um, whether Hager needs much help, I said, because we haven't seen him for so long. Um, don't know whether the ring rust is going to be an issue in there. Uh, whether that's why they've put him up against, you know, they've put him in with Dustin in the first place. So, mm. you know, walk him through it, get him back into the uh, flow of stuff. Uh, yeah, it's 100% Hager. Yeah. And the match I'd like to see in the future is uh, Jake Hager versus Luchasaurus. I think that'll yes. be a pretty good match. But uh, we oh, saw gosh. we saw a bit of a, a, a glimpse of a, a possible matchup. Um, and I think it was during the tag team battle wall last week where I think uh, Jake Hager went. F- no, it might be Luchasaurus went uh, nose to nose with with the butcher from uh, from the butcher and the blade, but uh, that would be a pretty tasty match sometime somewhere down the line. But uh, Jake Hager versus Luchasaurus would be a match I'll be looking forward to certainly. But uh, yeah, I think Hager's got the got got the win on Saturday night over Dustin in that one. But uh, then we've got a match for the AEW World Tag Team Titles: Kenny Omega and Adam Page going up against the Young Bucks, uh, Matt and Nick Jackson. Uh, this match is sure to be a good one. You've got two uh, babyface teams and um, uh, no doubt, uh, you know, the drinking angle from the hangman will probably play a part here. Uh, where, you know, we've seen it in a few matches before where uh, Adam Page has kind of uh, nearly uh, connected with Kenny Omega. And I think there has been a, an occasion where he's kind of hit him with a, a buckshot lariat, but uh, uh, they still came out of the match with a win. Um, but I think there's going to be possibly, you know, uh, Adam Page either turning full heel or something that's going to cost him the title. And I think the Young Bucks will kind of walk out the champions on Saturday night. That's just my thoughts. Uh, I think it's going to be a great match. I think they're going to give him some time as well. I think they're going to give him a good 20 minutes, maybe 25 minutes, um, because that's no less than these four talents deserve, to be honest with you. Um, I, I've not been the biggest fan of the Young Bucks. I've got to be honest with you. I think they're a bit too flippy and, uh, you know, a bit too yeah, a bit, bit too much flippy wrestling and not enough storytelling for me. But um, I have seen a little bit more um, storytelling from these two over recent weeks, a bit more than we had before. So I've kind of turned my opinion a little bit on the Young Bucks uh, ever so slightly. But I think more than anything, this is going to be a really good match. Interesting to see where it goes. I think there is going to be something that's going to come out regarding Adam Page um, and uh, you know possibly a heel turn. Uh, but um, yeah, I've got to go for the Young Bucks. And I think it's all going to be down to Adam Page possibly losing the championships for his team. But what about yourself, Nick? Yeah, it's weird with this match because if you remember the last time I was on the show, it, it, it just starting to plant the seeds of yeah. Page's sort of turn, and we, we discussed it at that point. Um, I don't think Page is going to go heel though. Uh, I'm hoping Omega and the books will go heel because uh, I think the fans are just too into Page, uh, even with the drinking and stuff. You know, he's getting in with the fans, celebrating afterwards. Um, I think it'd be easier to turn Omega and books heel. Um, they obviously did it so well over in Japan um, but yeah I think you're right Bucks will win um, you know it's got to be something to do with Paige that uh, costs the victory or Omega hesitates for a minute or something it could be down to Omega but some miscommunication between Paige and Omega leads to falling out uh, but I'm the opposite way around I'm hoping Paige comes out of his face uh, that's really interesting. I hadn't really given that much thought, to be honest with you, that, that it could be the other way round. Like you say, Adam Page is very popular with the fans, uh, mainly because he likes to share a drink or two with them. Um, but uh, yeah, oh, crikey, having Kenny Omega as, as a heel on AEW, that could be quite interesting. But certainly a fresh dynamic, a fresh plot twist and, uh, you know, a fresh... Um, a, a fresh character arc for Kenny Omega. Um, I mean, he, he probably needs it, to be honest with you. I, I, I think, you know, besides this Wednesday when he fought Pac in that really, really good 30-minute Ironman match, I haven't really seen a lot from Kenny Omega that I've been particularly impressed with um, besides that match on Wednesday against Pac, as I've just mentioned. So, you know, maybe a, a change is as good as a rest for Kenny Omega and uh, oh, maybe the other books, but um, could be interesting. That match he did against Moxley, the uh, hardcore one. I've got to be impressed with that one. Yeah, no, you're very right. Yeah, very true. That that was a really good match as well. Um, not everybody's cup of tea, I have to say, but I definitely enjoyed it. But uh, then the, the next match 
It's been building for a while. We saw the heel turn from MJF on his uh, mentor, uh, so-called best friend at the time, Cody. Um, this has had a really, really good build. You obviously had MJF at the beginning of the year set out some stipulations that Cody wasn't allowed to lay a hand on MJF um, and that he was to receive 10 lashes, which we saw a couple of weeks ago. That was a, an amazing segment on a really, really good episode of Dynamites. And then, of course, we had the, the spectacular steel cage match with uh, Wardlow last week. All leads up to this uh, big match. Finally, the two of them, uh, finally Cody gets his hands on MJF. And uh, that's something that he's been wanting uh, ever since the beginning of the year. And uh, or ever since MJF turned heel on him, I suppose that would have been at their last pay-per-view, which was full gear, I think, back in October or November of last year. Um, so uh, MJF, clearly the most uh, hated heel in AEW. Um, he really is a complete dickhead. And uh, I, I, I'm looking forward to this one. I, I don't know whether it's going to be the best wrestling match of the night, but I think it could receive quite a lot of crowd heat, which could elevate the quality of the match or, you know, certainly what we're watching on our TV screen. So I think they're going to deliver most definitely, but I think it's going to be more about the drama, more about the crowd heat and uh, more about how MJF is going to try and get away from Cody. Uh, to avoid the the beating that he so richly deserves. But um, I've got to go for a Cody win here, to be honest with you. I mean, if MJF is going to win, it's going to be by, you know, heelish tactics. Um, but uh, much in the same way we described Sammy Guevara as possible win against Darby Allen. But uh, yeah, I think that's the only way that he's going to win through heelish tactics. But I've got to say Cody purely because of the punishment that he's gone through, the hell that he's gone through over the last few weeks um, in the build-up to this match. But um it's, it's going to be a good match. I think, you know, they're going to deliver. And uh, I think the crowd absolutely adore Cody. I think uh, the AEW fans um, consider Cody a bit of a god. Um, and, uh, yeah, I like everything about Cody. I'm really bought into his character. And um, there we go. But uh, that's my thoughts on, on this match. Cody versus MJF. Uh, what's your thoughts on this one then, Nick? I don't know. Um, I think the... You're spot on. It's not going to be a five star, you know, wrestling clinic. It's going to be a story match, same as kind of like his first match with Dustin was. Uh, it's going to be about the emotion that they're going to have the the audience on the edge of the seats. They're going to tell a story. Uh, that seems to be Cody's role in the in the company, where the other guys do all the flippy stuff or have you know the five star technical matches. Cody's all about the build up. He's about the storytelling. Uh, the dude just tells an awesome story. Um, and it's going to be the same. Obviously, you've got the, you know, like you said, the biggest dick in the company going up against the the, the biggest baby face, um, you know, the, the people's champion. Um, and I don't know. I think if MJF loses, he loses some of that dickiness. Yeah. Um, where Cody, if Cody doesn't win, I think it just makes it, you know, where, where do you go after this if MJF loses? You know, that's the end of the feud. But if MJF wins by some dastardly means, they can put. It, we need more than one match. If Cody wins, there's no need for a follow-up match. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think with all the, the build that they've gone through, um, and uh, you know the, the, the storyline that they've built uh, to this match. I think it's it's kind of bigger than just the one match. I, I totally agree with you, and I think that yeah, that that could potentially lead me to believe that MJF wins, and then we've got uh, Double or Nothing two in May, so a few months down the road where they could potentially have a you know a big stipulation match because this is just a regular one on one singles match. Um, so I think that you know to to blow off a, a feud as big as this, they need a kind of a big stipulation match as we've been used to over the years as wrestling fans. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we could get the shocker on Saturday night and see MJF, um, the victor. So that's well, really, really intriguing. Haven't they just announced as well, obviously, uh, Lance Archer signing with AEW? Very or true. Um, you know, could he be Wardlow number two? You know, could he come out and cost Cody the match and team with MJF and Wardlow and have another little... A trio, maybe, maybe, yeah. I think they yeah, hinted on uh, Dynamite that uh, we're going to see something from Lance Archer, or Lance Archer is going to be at Revolution in one capacity or another. Uh, but uh, yeah, that adds another element to it, doesn't it? Really, so that's going to be really, really cool. And then th that leads us nicely to the main event match at Revolution. You've got uh, Le Champion, Chris Jericho going up against John Moxley. Uh, two of the best, um, you know, at what they do, so to speak. But uh, John Moxley, he, he's massively over with the fans. Chris Jericho, another, you know, true heel um, and can, you know, master manipulator. Um, 
oh, uh, uh, we mentioned earlier, I don't think we're going to see a, a five star classic from these two, but it's going to be all about the drama, all about the crowd heat, um, all about the character. I reckon there's going to be quite a bit of outside interference from other members of the, the Inner Circle. I think that could be a running theme through some of these matches with the Inner Circle getting involved. But certainly during this main event segment, I expect to see, you know, some members of, you know, maybe Guevara, maybe uh, Hager, quite possibly Santana and Ortiz uh, trying oh. to get involved in, 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 in this match. Um, and uh, it's a tough one to call. Um Personally, I want to see Chris Jericho hang on to the championship for a bit longer. I think he's been a, a fantastic champion. I think he deserves to hold on to it for longer, purely because um, he's helped to build the brand. He's added uh, importance to the championship. And um, I think that there's more um, that Chris Jericho can offer as the champion. And um, I think that, that there needs to be more in the story, more, more, more of the chase from uh, whether it be John Moxley or somebody else before he eventually kind of gives up the championship or loses the title. Um, so I don't think it's going to be John Moxley's night. I think it's going to be close, but I think that possibly with outside interference, uh, possibly with Chris Jericho and, you know, uh, with his heelish tactics, he's yeah. going to somehow manage to retain the championship because uh, I think it's too soon for Jericho to lose it. I think he kind of adds too much to uh, the, the championship uh, being the champion to give it up so soon into his reign. But um, that's just my thoughts on it. So I'm going for Chris Jericho. I think it's going to be a close one. I think it's going to be a bit of a nail biter and a, a, a really dramatic match. But what about yourself, Nick? Uh, I'm going Moxley. Um, oh, just interesting. I th- yeah, I, I want to see it on Moxley. Massive fan of Jericho. I've been since back in the day. Um yeah. I just think it could do some good if, if Jericho drops it and then you know, they get the, the rubber match in May with the next pay-per-view or something along those lines. Um, we get to see Sulky Jericho. We get to see the Jericho that's not a low champion. Yeah. You know, he's having a strop about it. And but Moxley's worked hard. Moxley's elevated his work. So I've been so impressed with him uh, over the last few weeks, especially with the eye patch. It's just everything he does in the ring means something. Uh, and I think it would just be... Awesome to see Moxley with the belt. Even if it's even if he just holds it for until the next pay per view and Jericho gets it back, um, I just yeah I think it'll give Jericho a bit of a chance to go away. He's, the dude's been busy for like what since May since it started in October since it's been on Episodic. Yeah. He's been in every episode. Dude's like you know forty seven or something. I'd say give him a couple of months off, let him come back before the next pay per view, build up the rematch. Um, but yeah, just let Moxley um, let him have it for a, a couple of months. See how he handles it. Um, just yeah, and then build up the the, the return match, and then yeah. potentially, you know, we could have Moxley versus Omega down the line with Omega as the heel. Very true. Yeah, good bit of fantasy booking there. I mean, I'm inclined to agree with you, and I, I certainly won't be disappointed if Moxley does win on Saturday night. I mean, I'll be happy for whether it's him or whether it's Jericho, because uh, I think both of them are kind of on the same level in terms of what they can, you know, bring to the role as champion and and, and uh, bring to AEW as a whole. Big fans of both of them, uh, so it, it, it w- won't disappoint me, uh, regardless of the outcome, to be honest with you. Um, but I, I just think that Chris Jericho just shines as a champion. I just think that everything he's done, you know, and uh, uh, all, all, the, all the all the memes and uh, all the gifts and all the t shirts, all the bottles of bubbly that he sold as champion, it's just been a, a, an absolute blast, to be honest with you. But uh, that, yeah, it, it's one of those kind of pickums, you, you know, that's going to be a difficult one to call, but uh. Yeah, we'll have to see. But no doubt, AEW Revolution is going to be an amazing pay-per-view. Um, I'll certainly be watching live uh, via the, the Fight TV app. You've got uh, seven or eight matches there. You know, Every single one of those matches are just absolutely stellar. It's a, a very, very stacked card. And um, it's their first pay-per-view of 2020. And uh, yeah, it, it's kind of... It's <laughs> when you compare this pay per view to uh, what we saw from the WWE last night over in Saudi Arabia, it's kind of uh, it's a world of difference, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's not even the same ballpark. No, it really isn't. But uh, there we go. So no doubt going to be a good, good pay per view, and what we'll be talking about for many, many months to come afterwards. 